This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll Amichai Liani is a wealthy New York businessman who has had the good fortune to be able to sponsor many Torah and mitzvot projects. A few years ago, he was invited to the Chabad Center for Russian Jewry in Queens, New York, and was given the great honor of being the sandak at a brit milah for two twins. The rabbi of the community was asked to be the sandak, the person who holds the baby having the circumcision on his lap, for the older twin, and Mr. Liani for the younger one. We learn in Jewish law that being a sandak is such a great honor and merit that no father should offer it twice to the same person. The rabbi of the Chabad Center recommended to the happy parents that Mr. Liani be invited to be the sandak for the younger twin. After the circumcision was over and they were done one right after the other, everyone sat down in the beautiful hall with food, to have a celebratory meal. And after everybody ate a little bit, the father of the twins stood up and began speaking excitedly in Russian. Since Mr. Liani didn't speak Russian, and he realized that he was the only non-Russian speaker in the room, he figured he could sneak out and nobody would care. He slipped the rabbi a check to cover the expenses of the meal and for the honor of being the sandak, and slowly started making his way towards the exit. As he was leaving, the mother of the twins ran over to him. First, she thanked him, and she spoke very good English. She asked him, please stay a little bit longer. Mr. Leone said, look, you know, everyone's speaking in Russian here, and I've done my job, and I helped out, and I really need to get going. But when the mother said, please stay, I have to tell you a story. So Mr. Leone said, okay, tell me the story. And she said, my husband and I, we got married when we still lived in the Soviet Union. And after the Soviet Union collapsed, we moved to the United States. We decided that we weren't going to have any children until we had been responsible adults and saved enough money to raise a proper family. And after we worked hard for 10 full years and had a steady, good income and a nice home here in Queens, we finally decided that it was time for us to start our family. But something was going wrong. And one year passed and another year passed and I wasn't getting pregnant, and I was also getting older, and I was really starting to get worried. So we started going to doctors, but none of them were able to help us. You know, we grew up in the Soviet Union under communism, and as a result, we had no exposure to Judaism whatsoever. And about a year ago, my husband, for whatever reason, he started going to this Chabad house here. At first, it was just an event here and there, and then he would go on Friday night. He enjoyed being with the Russian speakers, and it was close to where we lived. But then he started going Shabbos morning as well. And I realized, wait a minute, my husband is getting a little too involved in Judaism for my comfort. And I said to him, you know, we Russians were modern, educated people. And religion is not part of our culture. I want nothing to do with it. And I told my husband, listen, we're Russian. We don't do this. But my husband, he didn't want to stop. If anything, he started going to shul even more than he did before. I was so upset about not being able to get pregnant and upset about the feeling of losing my husband to religion that I told him, please, you have to stop. And when I saw he wasn't stopping, I finally gave him an ultimatum. You're going to have to choose. It's either me or the Chabad house. And if you go to shul again this Friday night, then don't bother coming back home. And my husband, he loves me. So he stayed home. That night, on Friday night, I had a dream, a petite elderly woman, she came to me in my dream. And she said, I know you're suffering because you really want children and you haven't been able to have them yet. And I know all that you've been through waiting to have these children. If you let your husband go to the Chabad house, I promise you that you'll have a child. And if you decide to go with him, I promise you that you'll have two. The mother said I was shocked in my dream. I said to her in the dream, how will I let you know what I decided? And the old woman, she smiled at me and said, let me show you. And then all of a sudden, 
We were driving through the streets of Queens. The car stopped at a house that was next to the Springfield Cemetery. She told me that when I go into the house on the left, right away, you're going to see a video playing. You're going to pass the video and go out the door on the other side of the room. You'll go down a few stairs and through another door. And then you'll be in a large room with many hot water machines for coffee and tea on the left side. Exit through the door on the far left into the cemetery and walk on the path until you arrive at a small building. That's where my husband is. My husband is the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and I'm outside, opposite the entrance to where he's buried. I woke up, and I remembered everything in the dream very clearly, because it seems so real to me. Despite my modern, cultured, educated, Soviet perspective, I decided to believe the dream. The next day, I told my husband that the next Shabbos can start going to shul again. Of course, he was very happy, he was surprised, but he was happy. And then when I told him that I was coming with him, his eyes almost bulged out of his head. He said to me, what's with you? And I told him, listen, I made a decision. I'm coming to shul with you. Next, I called the rabbi of the Chabad house that we're in right now. And he knew my husband's problems with me because my husband had shared his problems with the rabbi. And he said he wanted to keep Shabbos and he wanted to keep kosher. And he wanted to be more involved in Jewish life, but that I was holding him back. And even though I'd never met the rabbi before, he was very happy to hear from me. I told him that I wanted to go to the cemetery where the Lubavitcher Rebbe is buried. He was so excited. He said to me, you just tell me whenever you want to go, day or night, and I'll take you there. So you can imagine his surprise when I said, you don't have to take me. I've already been there. I just need to know how to drive there. So he told me how to drive there, and we went there. And everything was exactly like it was in my dream. Opposite the entrance to the Rebbe's Ohel, as they call it, I saw the resting place of his wife, the late Rebbe in Chayamushka, who had come to me in my dream and offered me this deal. I came as close as I could, and I whispered to her, I want to. I agree to go to the synagogue with my husband. I want to. And the next Shabbos, I went together with my husband to the shul. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. There were other Russian women there in their 30s as well, with educated, cultured backgrounds similar to mine, and I got along with them. I went back the next week and the week after, and I enjoyed going every time. A month after I started going, I found out that I was pregnant, and when I asked the doctor if he could please check if I had twins, he told me that I did. And you see my husband standing over there, excitedly telling the story in Russian. So this is the story that he's telling everyone right now. The story that I just told you.